Hi all, today I'm going to show you how you can estimate the your local cider real time. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave a comment. Okay, so why is this important? Well, we can quickly estimate the hour angle of the celestial object at a given time period, and thus we can plan an observation night accordingly. So, to get the hour angle of an object, celestial object, we have the local side of real time minus the right ascension of that object. So if you don't know or, oh, I'm sorry, if you, in other words, how many, how much time the object will cross our, the hour angle is how much time the object will cross our meridian. So with a negative hour angle is being how much time till the object crosses a meridian and a positive air angle denoting how much time has passed since the object has crossed our meridian. So I'll just draw this out with us in the center in a horizon coordinate system. We have our east, west, north and south and our celestial sphere. So if the object is in our east and is moving that way it's moving towards the, our meridian. Uh, so that will be in the negative hour angle. And when it's in the west, it's past the meridian and that's denoted as a positive hour angle. That's the convention. Okay. So, and recall that when an object just passes the meridian, this is the best time to view that object as the light from the object travels through the least air mass. Okay, so um, firstly, so how do we quickly estimate the local side of real time? Um, firstly, we know that at the vernal equinox, which is around March 21st, the sun at noon has an approximate right ascension of zero. Um, and this equals the side of real time. With each subsequent day, there is a three minute and 56 second uh, difference uh, or roughly a four minute uh, difference between UT and the side of real time. So with the average uh, days in a month, we have four minutes per day with the average days in a month, 30 days. This will get us two hours difference. So every subsequent month after March 21st is a two hours difference in side real time and the UT time. Okay, so say we wanted to do a nightly observation in Brisbane, Australia. So Brisbane, whoops, Australia, um, this year, so 2022 in December 12th, and uh, make it the same day, so 2100. That's 2100 on the 21st, sorry. Um, and we wanted to do some ob observations around 10, 10 p.m., so that is 2200. Whoops. So around 2200. Uh, say we wanted to observe the bright blue supergiant uh, Rigel, which is in the Orion constellation. Um, would it be observable at, at this time? Well, first, let us find the, let's do the approximate local side of real time using this uh, two hour method. So, the difference between the 12th and March is three. So, December is in the 12th, March is the third month. We have a difference of nine months. Thus, we will have nine. We'll just drop the units. So nine times two hours is equal to 18 hours. Now, since we're doing the observation, the observations around 10 p.m., 10 p.m. is 10 hours after noon. So we have to add 10 hours to this time. So that nets us 28 hours. Of course, we'll take 24 hours from this time, and that gets us four hours. So this is the local side of real time at 10 p.m. 
in Brisbane, Australia, on the twelfth, the yeah, on the in December on the twenty first, approximate. So this is the approximate local side of real time. Now I'll bring up a program which I quickly wrote. Um, hopefully that shows up. Okay. So I'll run this program. Now, the longitude of Brisbane is around 153.02, I think, 02. Now, I'll add in the date and time. So 2022, 12th month on the 21st. Now, because Brisbane is 10 hours ahead of UTC time, plus 10, we'll have to add in, because this program takes, I wrote it, so the program takes in UTC time. So 12 hours, so that's just at 12 noon, and enter that, and we get our side of real time. So about 12 minutes off, not bad. Don't don't worry about the mean and apparent, uh, the difference between the mean and apparent side of real times, and I've just got the green, green rich, uh, Green, which means side real times here listed to two, but don't worry about that. Main thing is, yeah, it's approximately you know, 12 minutes out. That's not too bad. So I'll just get rid of that for now. Now, will Rigel be observative, observer, observable Sorry, at this time? Now, Rigel, let's check my notes. It has... Yeah, Rigel has a right ascension of around five five hours. Uh, what is it? Yeah, five hours, fourteen minutes, and thirty two point two two seven two seconds, and a declination of negative zero eight. 12 arc minutes and 058981 arc seconds. Now, we we'll, won't worry about the declination, but of course, um, I'll just we'll just assume that the declination is okay, but that might not be always the case because you, that if your latitude's different, you might not be able to view it because you'll be underneath the horizon. So, but we'll just assume that the declination is okay. So, and we won't worry about the 14 minutes here and the 32 seconds. We'll just say it at a nice five hours. So the air angle of Rigel will be equal to the local side of real time minus its right ascension. Now the local side of real time is four hours and minus the five hours here will get us negative one hours. So Rigel is in our east at this time and has not crossed the meridian yet. And he'll cross the meridian around one hour's time. Um, so this won't be exactly this, because this is rough estimates. It'll probably be around you know, plus or minus 30 minutes or so, but it's, it's close enough. And um, so, yeah. Now let us um, consider another time. So. What happens if we wanted to observe Rigel tonight? So, um, so the date today is uh, 20, sorry, it's the 8th and it's the 5th today. And we want to observe at the same time, so 2200. Again, this, is, this will be in Brisbane, Australia. So what will be the local side of real time tonight? Well, the difference um, here will be, so we have a five months difference because you know, we're in the eighth month times uh, take away three. So that's a five month difference. But considering that this is just the start of the month, near the start of the month, We'll have to take that into account. So let's say it's 
hours. So thus, no, 4.5, sorry, 4.5 months, not hours, sorry. So now it's 4.5 months, so times that by two. So we've got 4.5 times two, that gets us nine hours. Now again, the observing time is at 10 o'clock. So we'll have to add 10 hours from, because it's from noon to 10 p.m. is 10 hours. So we'll add 10 hours to that. And that gets us 19 hours. So that's the rough local side of real time. All right, now where is Rigel at this time? So again, Rigel has a right ascension of roughly five hours. Actually, let's, let's check how far out that local side of real time is. I'll bring up my program again. So, whoops, hopefully that shows up again. Okay. So I'll rerun this program. Again, Brisbane is 153.02 degrees in longitude from Greenwich. So add that. Uh, the date, this time will be 2022. Date today is August, and it's the 5th. And again, the 10 hours difference, because Brisbane is plus 10 hours from UTC, we'll have to put in 1,200 here. Okay, add that in. And here we get a, a local mean side of real time of 19 hours, which is pretty damn good. So that's a pretty good estimation. And we're only about eight minutes out. Okay, so that's good. Minimize that. Now, so where will Rigel be at this time? So Rigel, yeah, again, the right ascension is five hours. So it's our angle will be local side of real time minus the right ascension so that's 19 hours minus the five hours that gets us 14 hours so 14 hours is in the positive direction oh that's a positive so the hour angles that means it's 14 hours past our meridian so from 24 hours that equals 10 hours time so it's 10 hours so that means it's 10 hours so from our observation time which is at 10 p.m it's 10 hours the next time it will cross the meridian again will be in 10 hours so that will be the next day on the 6th of august around 8 a.m so obviously that will be in the daytime and that won't, <laughs> the seeing conditions will be horrible because obviously we'll have heaps of sunlight. Uh, so this shows you that Rigel will be not, be not be viewable at this time, so tonight. So that's a, just a quick way to check whether an object is observable. So now for some caveats, obviously when I showed you that program, the, you know, the side of real time was out by so many minutes. Um, so the method is a very rough approximation due, due to like true noon time at your location doesn't really correspond to the civil time because uh, there's a longitudinal, longitudinal difference with the time zone boundaries. Also, obviously, the calculation, it doesn't factor in like the equation of time or the, the variation of the solar time due to the Earth's varying orbital, orbital velocity around the sun and the precession of the Earth's spin axis due you know, to, to torques in the, in the solar system, uh, the solar system body, sorry. Um, and also, obviously, we have star maps and planetarium software, which can give us quite uh, you know, precise locations and times of celestial objects. 
However, it's just, it's just good to have an estimation method when you see an object in a catalog that you immediately can guesstimate with uh, when a good viewing time will be. So you'll just look at the right ascension and say, oh yeah, this this object will be good to view in you know the so and so time period. So over time, you won't have to make these rough calculations, and you just have to remember like what right ascension values correspond to these good viewing time view uh, windows. Also remember that the declination is important relative to your observing latitude. Uh, so thanks for watching and if you found this helpful please like and subscribe. Cheers.